Thanks, Joe. Thank, thanks for the introduction. Actually, I, I, I want to start. Well, my, my name is Pedro. As you can see, I'm the head of FPNA Financial Planning and Analysis for the ones who are not acquainted with the term of the OLEX Group, which is also the, the leading uh, trading platform in the world, one of the leading play, trading platforms in the world. I'm speaking from Berlin at the moment. Uh, and I, you can move to the next uh, slide, please, JR. I want to, yeah, I want to I move, I want to move some steps back because I see that the topics today in the, in the core are quite deep and quite interesting, to be honest. But uh, speaking from the from the persona of finance, who I am, I think we uh, I, I need to vocalize a concern that I have, which is the a widening knowledge gap that I see, at least from a finance counterparts with the tech folks or the, the tech within the tech industry. So um, today I want to I want to speak about some of the, the observations I have from a finance with my finance lens uh, in the tech in industry. Um, I want to give some examples of of things I've seen, good and bad practices, and also shed some light on some opportunities we have to maybe come closer to each other or or from a finance standpoint, be more relevant to the tech business. So if you can move to the next one, JR. And the way that I want to start by doing that uh, is to use my story as um, as a background, as an illustration. So just for, for, for information, I'm, I'm working, I'm, I'm, I was forged into the tech industry. I'm working there for more than 10 years, only in different companies from ERPs, to uh, online fashion now to online market marketplace, uh, and I've provided support to tech in multiple topics from procurement vendor planning, controlling, you know, so really a wide variety of topics from finance standpoint, and also to to the tech industry, I've, I've been in touch with a lot of domains, so cloud, data centers, software development, migrations, and so on. Yet I must admit, and that's something that uh, the message of this of this slide is. I still, or I, for a long time, I really struggled to understand my role or my place uh, in this industry. So it was really hard for me to to first grasp what the what what the tech teams were actually doing, and see how tech can can get away of the the typical transactional activities, for example, on headcount controlling, um, other sorts of of spanner controls and and cost center reportings and so on. So how I could actually move one step further into understanding and helping influence the business to just to, to, to succeed. Um, moving next, Jer. So here I would like to show to you uh, from my lens again, a few examples on how we, we in finance usually fail to, to approach and support tech. And uh, and that's a very opinionated slide, of course. Uh, it's it's me speaking on behalf of the finance teams. But well, starting from the first one, I see, for example, or I've saw I've seen in 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 my experience uh, a very bad, um, let's say, a practice of budgeting pl budget planning uh, from a finance standpoint, and that that's mostly or a lot related to the fact that the tech team or the finance teams doesn't really understand uh, cost usage drivers of our main tech contracts. And uh, this leads to unpredictability and just lack of precision in our planning. Second example, uh, whenever we are asked, for example, from a finance point of view to initiate or lead cost savings initiatives, I think we uh, the first question is how to prioritize initiatives in tech. Uh, the problem is uh, we, we in finance often don't understand the dynamics and the dependencies. For instance, uh, if we decommission a stream or a, or, a, or a team who is providing support to a product, how this will influence other dependent products? And even if we, if we take one product down, what are really the direct and indirect costs of this product? I'm talking about AWS footprint, but I'm also talking about other footprints in other contracts that are related. The food behavior of finance in these cases is is just to avoid hard boast and usually staying in comfort zones. For example, uh, cutting the known areas, travel, training, um, uh, fruits in the office. So material things that we can more control and understand. Third point, uh, evaluation of investment asks. I think that we, 
we also uh, have a really hard time understanding a value of an initiative when it comes from a tech request. Uh, what's the worth of, of this initiative? What's the value? And even what's the, what's the future cost of this initiative? How to forecast it? How the cost will scale with growth? So well, at the moment, this is something that I can state is that finance has very limited instruments to make a true data-driven call for tech investment requests. And the final one, measuring efficiency and effectiveness. And I think that this is a very also, there's no consensus about this in the, in the industry so far, how we can really be precise or be fair in, in the way that we judge work that's, that, that's being employed in the tech industry. But we still find it has, lacked, has limited, again, instruments to measure input, output, outcome of work in tech. So what, what we see is, is, a, is a black box that we inject cash and we, 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 we trust that the work will be done so that we, we, we see the out, outcome in the end. Uh, if you move to the next one, Jar. So that made me reflect like all these pain points uh, that, I, that I listed. If, if finance really needs to, to know and to get that deep into the, into the industry of tech, or if our, our seat or our place on the table is actually somewhere on a higher level. And then I was checking, and I, this is an exercise that I, that I love doing, is, is comparing the tech industry against other, other, let's say, more stable or more mature industries, such as manufacturing, commodity goods, services. And, and what I found is, is that, in fact, we, we do have finance playing a way more instrumental role in these industries than we currently have, than I currently see in tech, in generally speaking. So let's take, for example, manufacturing, uh, and let's travel to, uh, I mean, Germany. So let's travel to Bavaria. Uh, let's take BMW. Uh, if I if I speak in with friends of mine, and I, that's something that I even to to have a look in my notes. So they 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 control a finance controller in the in the in the factory of BMW knows every little piece of of every little process and can control track report. On each step of a, of a development of an automobile industry, so they control machinery downtime, cash to cash cycle, avoided cost throughput, throughput by steps of the process, and so on and so forth. A lot of things um, that 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 just add value and, and can have a better understanding and see through what's happening in the business. Commodities the same way. I've been working in my past experience in a, in the iron ore industry, uh, and we. And this industry uh, has a very strong also finance arm looking into that. So we can, for example, or the finance teams there can, for example, know also every single step from production. So extraction of the iron ore to logistics and to the sales itself. So they know, for instance, what's the, what's the, the full life cycle of an iron ore and they can really uh, bring metrics to the table. Uh, so what I what I my reflection here, just as a takeaway, is I think that if the question is what's the role that finance should play in the tech industry, I think it's a role deeper into the role that in the majority of the finance teams usually do up until now. I think that we are so far under provided of insights to influence and, and read tech. Um, if you can move to the next one. JR, please. Yep, sorry, one second. There was, looks like somebody somehow enabled the yeah. annotation tool. And so uh, I was removing those from the screen. There's, there's, yeah, them. they want to communicate through the slides. Exactly. And of course, now I've hit the button and it won't let me stop communicating via annotate. Uh, no problem. You, there we go. Cool. Yeah, so I think that uh, just uh, this one is, uh, is quite of an obvious reflection, but just thinking about why then tech is so underprovided of, or sorry, why finance is so distant from the tech industry as compared to other industries. And I think that there are two very straightforward answers to that. The first one, and I'm gonna start with the number two on the right hand side is we are dealing with intangible capital. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's way harder to track and understand the development of a intangible products such as tech than it is with other other goods, for example, or machinery or automobile. 
So this is definitely one of the points that that make finance uh, finance life to to bring metrics and insights uh, to another level. And the first one is innovation. So here's a point that tech is is really it's really challenging because the moment that one technology is launched, the it gets outdated a few months later and it's not only hard for finance to track it, but even for tech folks themselves to understand and to get acquainted of all the new technologies and innovations that are coming along. So this is a, I think these are these are the two answers that I see for the distance that I observed between finance in the tech in and the tech uh, in the tech industry. So how I see we coming along or or this bridge coming together. Uh, or we getting a bit better in the, in our, at, at our profession uh, as finance uh, folks. So here I put, I laid out a few examples. So these are just, uh, I threw some discussion points. Of course, it's not limited to that, but uh, on the left-hand side, I, I noted down some points for finance folks and the, on the right-hand side, I also noted down a few for tech folks, how we can come together. I think that from the, from the starting from the finance ones, um, and the first point that I that I, I really like to to say is, we need to think from the same hinge sheet. This means, whatever format, forum, uh, channels, style uh, that tech uses, finance needs to be part of it. So finance cannot be an appendix of a tech ecosystem. Finance to be needs to be blended with it. So if we use root cause analysis, if we use documents, if we use Jira tickets or if it's like uh, this needs to be integrated. The same for financial reports. They should be they they need to be as much as possible blended into the into the ecosystem that tech uh, belonging to tech. So the tech platforms. So we need to find the common platforms to work together. Uh, second point I would say that is uh, finance also needs to earn the right to sit on the table with tech. And here's, I mean, uh, about finding the small opportunities that you have when you're 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 doing your role with of business partnering, for example, with tech, to to find your tipping points. For instance, if you have, if there is, if you know that there is a new regulation coming along that you need that uh, tech has been um, has been asked to to change the rotation policies of the backups. Finance should understand this is an opportunity to make a use case of that and justify it through financial through financial lens, what this means to the company, and and you collect a lot of these examples and this builds up on your kind of your portfolio as a finance business partner, but also gives you uh, enough attention and, and proximity with that. So that I see here as a point of earning your right to 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 be a business partner. Uh, third point is embrace curiosity and be be really open to learn uh, what's out there. Uh, as I said in the in the previous slide, we have a lot of we have a lot of new things coming on uh, in tech. So a lot of innovation, a lot of a lot of new developments. And finance usually is uh, generally speaking a very a more conservative, uh, let's say, domain. And actually, the the working with tech makes us or obliges us to come to be more open and to be more flexible and to learn more. Uh, otherwise you just become less and less relevant to the business. Uh, and the final, the final one on the finance side, I think that I, and that's something that I also can relate back to my, my own trajectory. I struggled a lot because I started uh, my career even before PinOps was framed as such. Uh, but from time, as time, Went by, went past. Uh, there were a lot of new and very powerful frameworks shaping up. So we have FinOps now. We have TBM. We have ITFM. We have ITSM, as 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 we've seen today. We have a lot of them, and I just list, listed the, the three of them that came to my mind. But I think that finance needs to finance team needs to 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 get a hold of these topics and understand and. And use them as much as possible because the, the literature is, is still very fresh and it's under development in progress. So I think it's a great time also to be on the edge, learning and applying this and testing and failing. Just uh, as a final note, I 
I, I wanted to send a message more direct directed to to finance colleagues uh, on reimagining the way that we we currently do or that we do the classic finance playbook. So just exploring other alternatives and other other areas, expand collaboration with FinOps, TBM, ITFM offices. If they don't, if if an office doesn't exist, just bring it over. Take take it. Uh, implement this in your company or, or or use pieces of it. So I think it's also can be a quite of a stimulating journey to to get a bit out of the the classic finance um, finance uh, finance area. And finally, I think that the, the the last message is is to trust that the closeness to tech will bring. Uh, what we are searching for, which is pretty much just casting a wider net for value-added tasks and get out of transactional ones and just become more relevant to, to the business. JR here from the FinOps Foundation. Thank you for watching. Please go to finops.org if you want to get plugged into this amazing community. And of course, hit subscribe right here on YouTube to get all the future content. Hope to see you soon.